Hey, this is Jason from Denworks. I'm gonna show you my 1975 International Scout II. Nice little rig, nice little driver. I love these, these rigs actually. We're out here in beautiful Oregon. Right down there is Willamette Valley uh, Pie Company. Uh, that'd be a great place for cars and coffee place they've got a if you've never been there before you should take a trip down here steal a couple strawberries out of the field there and uh but anyways i got a coffee shop and a bunch of pies a lot of a lot of things a lot of gift stores and and things in there but it's fun and nice thing is my shop is only four miles from here and i got a little place where i store some cars right around the corner so anyways uh here we go this is is it i got this a little while ago did a little refurbishing. It still has some work to do uh, to it for the next guy, but um, we'll just walk around it. You can get a good look. It's factory, originally yellow. I don't know the, the actual name of it. The paint on it, um, you know, it's in fair condition for, you know, a nice driver. You'll, you know, see certain things on it when we get close. Um, I like the uh, overriders here, the push bars factory push bars that's something you don't see often a lot of people take that off uh, and I like like the classic grill if you remember I had a 79 uh, for sale a little while ago on bat and it had a, a black kind of plastic grill this is real classic looking but you'll see some of the some of the chrome flaking and, and stuff on it it's actually fairly straight down the side you know if you look at the front here you can see some cracks in the in the headlight actually a couple little runs they'd probably wet sand out it's got pretty old paint on it quarter panel or i mean the fender is in in nice shape i don't know my quarter panels from my from my fenders but there, this here is a uh um fender nice wheels and tires good tread on them Obviously not a factory wheel. You can see it's got locking hubs. It's got a couple little chips in the glass right there. Real small stuff. There's some little bubbling here. Hopefully you can see that. We'll look at the door. Rockers are pretty good. I show some really nice shots underneath in a video so you can see the rockers. There's a little repair done there some little bubbles there got ray charles still playing in there is that willie nelson singing with him i think it might be i don't know anyways uh you can look down the side here it's got nice gloss to it you can see some little bubbles and stuff on the top see some paint flaking off a little bubbling I'm sure the top has been off and on this thing for years a little dent it leaks inside for sure probably needs new gaskets this was a daily driver from uh, I got from a guy and uh, he was driving it every every day to work you can see it's still licensed you know 2018 still registered Here's one of the biggest scratches you can see on it. Right here, it's been touched up. You got your bubbles up here still. This fishing rod here isn't going with it. Actually, that's my grandpa's. He was an iron worker and they gave it to him uh, when he retired. So I thought it was kind of fun to have it in there. Part of the Denworks name has to do with my grandpa, actually. I'll tell you about it later. Maybe not in this video, but later I might. You can see some little bubbles here, little dings. I think I showed you the little bubbles there. You can see the rockers, little bubbles, little dings. You can see a couple little bubbles up here in the paint. 
a little dent it's been touched up I think you can see all all the way down the all the way down the gutter you know it could need new sealing in there Go around here to the front again. You can see the front fender. You can see the bottom of the fender is real nice. You know, there's a lot of uh, touch-up paint and different things going on with it. You can see the bubbles on it, but you know it's a driver. It's not a restored rig, but... You know, it's been kind of refurbished, so actually someone could drive it. You know, you can drive it around, and it, it's dependable, and um, it's just a project, and you just go to the next level, and uh, then you can just go from there. Hey, here we are driving around the 1975 Scout out here in the country. Um, sometimes I like to show scenery, what's, what's out and about here. A lot of farms, different things. The... Uh, over here, pumpkin fields. They're already getting ready for uh, Halloween down at Walmart. And I saw some Christmas decorations out the other day, and it's just the end of August. But anyways, this is a great driving rig. Um, nice looking. You know, it's more of a driver than anything. It's a 4x4. They actually built two-wheel drive scouts. I learned one time because I thought I bought a four-wheel drive. And it had to be a two-wheel drive after I got it home. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, anyways, uh, we're just going to cruise around, and uh, we'll pull over in a little bit. We'll do a little walk around, show you the four-wheel drive working and things, and, uh, and just so you can get a better feel of it. So we'll listen to Ray Charles here. I know uh, Keanu West made that Gold Digger song. I think I like the old one better. The uh, But anyways, both both good tunes but Ray Charles I'm more of a fan hey here we are having a little bit of fun out here behind my house kind of country looking I'm going to show you the lights. We'll do a walk around on the interior. You can see all the marker lights work around it, all the way around. Show you the headlights, high beams, got the blinkers, right, left. Walk around the other side real fast. We're not afraid to get it dirty a little bit. Right here you got your marker lights, brake lights, turn signals, and then reverse. They even got everything working. You can see the markers on this side. So it's a good looking, good looking rig. We'll uh, do a little walk around on the interior now and uh, do some engine shots for you. Want to ride? Well, let's check out the interior. You can see that door actually sh shuts pretty nice. Both of them shut nice. You know, overall the interior is, you know, it's a used interior, but it's not too bad. Actually, you can see the seats ripped just a little bit actually maybe quite a bit but i have to admit to you that seat is so comfortable i'd actually be afraid to put new material on it on it and stuff i mean it just feels like a, a love seat sitting in there and uh it's just re really really comfortable got original steering wheel on it you can see inside the jams very clean and you got a little bit of surface rust and stuff right there a little there you can see this is pretty clean. Very good for a scout. You can see the dash. A couple tiny small cracks. Big one over there and another one in the middle. 
So you can see overall it's, you know, it's, it's all complete. You know, the temperature gauge works. The oil gauge, this actually doesn't work very good. So we have some pictures. Uh, I put an um, external one on the engine just to, to show what the oil pressure was because this gauge was just, it just wasn't showing right. So it's at idle, it's uh, at cold, is 38 PSI. And when you rev it up and stuff, you know, normal driving is around 50, which is great. Alternator works, light, and then the uh, gas gauge. Speedometer and everything works, odometer. The heater works. The lighter's not working right now. And I showed a video earlier with the CD player working. And if you'll notice the pictures, I actually put a uh, antenna on it now. So we'll come around here to the other side. You know, this door as well it opens and shuts nice. Windows roll up. You know, they're a little bit stiff, but they do work. You can see the dash from this side and the seat. You can see the original floor mat in it. It's got some cracking and stuff in it. You can see your four-wheel drive shifter on the floor. There's the little remote glove box. You can see here how to do the hubs, locking hubs in the front. This is how you open the hood. Got to be strong. Show you in the back here. That's an original seat. Actually, I think that is the original seat to this. I was looking in that brochure that I show in the pictures, and it has that material on it. And I don't know if the front seat's not the original or they replaced it at some point, you know, in the, in the centers. You can see the six by nine speakers. You can see all the interior panels are nice. I think it was supposed to have some kind of headliner in there, but it, it's missing. This track here is for a um, dome light that goes up there. But overall, I mean, it's just a Spartan kind of interior for a 4x4 utility rig. So it's actually in pretty good shape. You can see the quarters and the jams. Original VIN number right here. Looks here like when it was bought new. It was in uh, December 10th, 1975. And it was actually built in 522.75. Okay, here we're gonna take a look underneath the hood. Why don't you go ahead and start it up, Tim, so we can hear it run. It's got you uh, the original uh, 345 in it like i said underneath you know we replaced a lot of gaskets you know, your valve cover gasket intake manifold gasket crank seal we put a new uh water pump thermos or a thermostat in it and uh water pump gaskets and stuff had a lot of little leaks so we wanted to get it um you know just kind of leak free you can see here it's got power brakes it had a, a new master cylinder put it on a while ago I should have changed this, and I will. Bungee cord hanging in the battery there. I'll put a new uh, bracket on there. I should have caught that earlier. That's why the 4x4 guys do it though, you know. You can see this isn't rusty. Go around here to the inside, on the other side here. Actually, when we had the valve covers off, I should have took pictures of it. It's really, really clean um, inside the engine. And you can see there, too, there's the fuel filter, clean fuel. And you can see the smog stuff here. You can see it says 345 engine. That's all the location stuff. The only thing missing off the engine, there's just a little tube that goes here on the bottom. It's just a little, uh, usually a little aluminum tube that goes from here to like a heat riser that goes down there. That's easy to find. But overall, it's a really clean engine compartment. Um, you know, the engine's got a lot of power, good driving car. And uh, so not a lot of modifications under here, just stock. 
So you can see the hood is in good shape. So why don't you rev it up a little bit, Tim? We'll go back to the exhaust so you can see that. Here you go. You know it doesn't uh, it doesn't blow smoke or anything like that. And when it's cold, when you start it up, it doesn't blow smoke either. So sometimes they'll get worn valve seals and stuff. So um, this engine's actually in good shape. Transmission's in good shape. So. Uh, anyways, um, we'll show you some other stuff and uh, we'll get out of here and talk to you later. Hey, here we are underneath the, the Scout. Just figured we'd take a video of it underneath. That way I could explain some certain things about it. Uh, you know, it's hard in still, still shots, you know, to explain it. So if I can point out, you know, it's helpful. You can see it's got pretty new tires on it. Really good tread. Even wear all the way around. Um, they're Wild Country Radio XTXs. They're 31 by 10 and a half by 15 LTs. If you don't know much about tires, LT is light truck. Uh, a lot of times you can see tires this size. Normally they're LTs, but you know sometimes you'll see a tire that says you know P235 or uh, what that P means passenger. LT is is a truck tire, and that's something you want to see on a rig like this. We actually put um, you know I, when I bought it, I drove it home. Oh, probably about 25 miles, and I noticed the brakes were, um, they were okay, but they, they shuttered just a little bit. So we actually put brand new rotors on the front, uh, on both sides. The calipers are in good shape, and we, we put uh, new brake shoes on it. And you can see the rubber lines. We didn't replace those, but they're in good shape um, on both sides. So it's got new brakes up front and in the back. We didn't have to change those. Uh, they had, you know, good shoe wear and stuff on them, so we left that. Uh, you'll see on the front here we've got a Dana 44 axle. Um, before 1974, uh, that was an option. In 1974 and up, they became uh, standard on these. So you got Dana 44s in the front and back with a Dana 20 uh, um, transfer case. You can see here the gear ax uh, ratio is 3.07, which is great for the highway. Um, if you're not doing any major climbing and stuff, a lot of people like, you know, 410s or something like that. But, you know, this one here is not going to rev you to death on the highway. Um, so it's got 307s ratios in the front and back. Um, you can see here uh, the frame's in good shape. When I got it, it had a bunch of oil leaks. So we decided to fix that. You can see on the transfer case and the transmission, there's a lot of uh, just oil seepage uh, residue. And I think a lot of that actually came from the motor. Some of it could be coming from there, but we don't have anything really hitting the ground. Uh, so I put a new oil pan gasket on it. Um, I say I did. Uh, that's always the big joke here. I make everything sound like I do it, everything myself, but I have a lot of people that help me uh, out of the kindness of their heart. Uh, we put a new crank seal. Uh, gasket back here, put a new intake manifold gasket, brand new ga or valve cover gaskets. Um, we're just trying to stop leaks and right now it's doing good. Um, we'll walk here, we'll look at the rockers. This is on the driver's side. You can see the rockers real nice all the way across here on the inside. You can see the floor is good. You can see your body mount and I'm not talking the rubber, you know, the the rubber gasket here is old, but um, the body mount, when I'm talking about that, is I'm, I'm showing it's not rusty there. You can see your perches are in great shape. You can see your side of the frame is great. Here's the back body mount on the, uh, trying to twist you around here. You can see the, bo the back body mount there is in great shape too. You know, it could use new rubber bushings, but... Um, it's in, in really nice shape. <clears throat> Here's the rear end, you know, Dana 44. Actually, here's the transfer case. You can see that tag number up there, 301060-4457720-C92. One thing that would be nice on this is to actually Cut this off right here and run dual exhaust. That helped the 345 
V8 breathe a little better and it sound great too. There's no holes in the muffler. You know, but I like dual exhaust. I think everyone does. You can see the rear end. Got disc, of course, in the front, like I mentioned before, and it's got drums in the back. You know, the shocks are older. They work, has a good stance. It's got overloads on there. This is back in the cargo area. Actually, you can see the bottom of the quarter is real nice. You know, the bottom of the, the quarter cab there is nice. I mean, later on, I'll show you the interior, but you can see some rust. There's a rust hole right here going along there. And you'll see it on the other side too. But one of the thoughts, if I was going to keep this, I'd cut this section out. It's real flat and just have that replaced. You see inside the wheel well is in good shape. You can see the bottom of the quarter is nice. We'll go around here to the passenger side. So you can see here, I was talking about the, the rush. You can see the floor or the sidewall up there on the inside of the, uh, you know, under, underneath the, the uh, rubber mat in the back. You can see the quarter is nice. You know, no rust underneath here. There's a couple little tiny bubbles. Inside the wheel wells in great shape. You got body mounts back here. Usually these get really rusty. You can see the metal's nice and it, it's nice on the other side. There's some little bubbling. You can see around the wheel lip there. You can see a couple little little bubbles there, a couple little pinholes right here on the bottom. If you look on the inside though, very clean. It's a double walled unit. I'm more concerned about this side than this side. This stuff's easy to repair. This, this gets harder, so this is in good shape in here. Body mounts in great shape. Looking for the rear one. There's your body mount. Metal's all good. Torque box is in great shape. You can see in the bottom of the, cor the, the fender's in good shape. Not rusty. It's all not rusty there. I'll go along the side here and just gives, gives you a little different kind of perspective looking underneath the car with the video. This is in great shape too. No signs of any major accidents that I've noticed either. It's pretty clean. You know, this is in, in nice shape. Rocker on the outside. You can see it's nice, but you can see a couple little and a little repair they did here. You can see some bubbling in the bottom of the, the quarter panel there. You can see around the wheel lip. You can see someone used some filler on this quarter. You just see it's kind of on the inside there. You can just see some residue where they didn't sand it all the way down. You can see a little Bondo crack right there. But hopefully that gives you a little bit of a, a look underneath here and uh, helps answer a few, a few of your questions. Just, you know, looking and, and discussing stuff underneath there. So uh, we'll get back up to the upper side of her and, and let you take a look. You can see the panels are in good shape. You can see in here, this isn't all rusty. Probably wondering why I've got a little cup here. Anyways, it has some screws in it. I wanted to look underneath here because I saw those that area where I'm showing you underneath the car um, and the quarter panels there. Looks worse from this side, but it, it's really not because you've got to cut out the same panel like I was showing you underneath. But I wanted to look here so you get a better look. You can see that. This is where I was sticking my fingers up through on that side. You can't see it from underneath. But again, all I would do is 
cut this section out all the way up to there, up to the wheel arch, and replace that. Rest looks good. This side here, same thing. Just cut it out in this flat area and put a new piece. Or don't do anything at all. I mean, you don't have to do something. It's just, if down the road uh, you wanted to replace that, you could. It's very, very common that they, they do that, um, especially when they leak and things. So, But it's just, I wanted to show you that so you had a good idea. But when you get it, we'll attach this piece of trim back on it across the back here. But I didn't want to be hiding anything. And, and you know, it, it looked okay from, from underneath, but it... You know, it'll just take a little bit of work. You can see this this jam is real nice too. You can see the tailgate's not all rusty. You can look on the outside here. You know, no rust. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and put it in the four wheel drive to show you how that works. and. I think so. Right now we're in two wheel high. It can be a little finicky sometimes, but you got to manhandle it, especially in coming back out of uh, four wheel low back to two wheel. But right here you can see two wheel high, four wheel high, four wheel low. On the dash here, when I put it in uh, two or a uh, four wheel, there'll be a little light that comes on. You can see that park brake on. I don't know why it does that, but that's what it does when I take it in and out. So now we're in four wheel high. So now we're gonna put it in four wheel low. So we'll just come to a stop. There's four wheel low. Okay. 